thank you so much for joining us for online worship. We are glad that you're with us and want you to stay tuned for important announcements at the end of the service. Well, I believe you when you say your hand will guide my every way. Will I receive the words you say every moment of every There's your will for me Help me to rid my endless fears You've been so faithful for all my years With one breath you make me new Your grace covers all I Because this broken road prepares your will for me. Well, I'm broken, but I still see your face. Well, you've spoken. Join me in a time of prayer. God, it seems that in spring, it's such a great reminder of who you are, that you always bring us new birth, that as we see the green come back and the flowers, the trees flowering and the flowers blooming, we are so grateful for this creation which you have created for us to live in. God, help us not to take it for granted and help us when we see these beautiful scenes in nature to be reminded of how much you love us. God, help us, help it to give us the strength, to give us that little smile or that sliver of hope for us to make it through the day. For certainly there are many things in our own lives and in the world around us that weigh on our hearts. Help us to give that over to you, God. Help us to feel your presence and help us to be your presence to someone else. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who came to save us from ourselves. In your name we pray, amen. Our scripture today comes from Matthew's gospel, the 14th chapter, starting with the 22nd verse. 
Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand, caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's amazing this is the first time in Matthew's Gospel where it actually records that the disciples worshipped him, that they actually recognize his divinity. Um, It's mentioned in the 16th chapter of Caesarea Philippi that Jesus truly is the Son of God, but this is the first time that they worship. Um, Well, we walk by faith and not by sight, amen? So what is your next faithful step in following Jesus? What is it he's calling you to do to get out of the boat, if you would? Well, back in 1859, a man by the name of Charles, make make sure I get the right name, last name, Blondin, Charles Blondin, ended up taking a 1,300-foot cable and stretching it from the American side of Niagara Falls all the way over to the Canadian side. And um, his manager was named Harry Colcord, and um, Harry was just an incredible strategist, and he had done so much publicity that for the day when this was to happen, which was June 30th, you know, people turned out by thousands and thousands, and all kinds of vendors were there to make money off of the deal. But um, in addition to that 1,300-foot cable, there were a number of other shorter ropes that were there for secured and um, support and stability, but basically the center, they couldn't enforce it as much. It was sagging kind of a little bit in the center. But um, yeah, for Charles, he, he was an amazing. Blondin was incredible as a trapeze artist and doing all of that. And so it basically was nothing for him to, to walk across there. He, he started on the American side, walked the whole way over, and then turned around. He had a camera with him, actually, and he was snapping pictures of people, the crowds who were there. And um, just to add a little bit more drama to it, he, he ran for part of the way and um, was safe, no problem whatsoever. And now you can imagine the people were thrilled, thought that was amazing. But, you know, after a few times of walking over, walking back, you know, people think, oh, is that all there is? Come on, there, there needs a little bit more. Um, but they added the drama here and there. Um, eventually, he walked the entire thing backwards over and back. Um, he ended up taking a wheelbarrow across. One time, he went and actually cooked an omelet when he went over and back. Another time, he actually did it blindfolded, going. But um, one of the times, it seemed as if it was just a natural walk across that uh, Charles had walked from the American side, going over to the Canadian side. But when he came back, it was something that not anyone expected. For Harry, his manager actually climbed on his back 
And he came from the Canadian side back to the American side with him there. And that extra weight was something they did not have before. And some of the support ropes actually snapped and broke. And, you know, they had to get their, their balance. But eventually he made it safe across. And um, um, later as Harry was asked about that, you know, what, what was that like being on his back? And he said, well, basically he told me, Harry, you no longer exist. Your body, your mind, your soul, they, they are all mine. So if we're out there and we start to sway, you don't try to compensate. You just do whatever I do. Don't you try to do anything to balance yourself. It's, it's just all up to me. And I think that is probably one of the best illustrations to understand what it is to walk by faith. I mean, Paul would write to the Galatian church, you've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer you who live, right? It's no longer I who live. It's, it's Christ who lives in me. This life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and who gave his life for me. So we no longer exist, right? It's as if we are climbing onto God's back. It's no longer our body, mind, soul. It, we are Christ. We belong to him. And so basically he is guiding our, our next faithful step in whatever we do, Walking by faith isn't always easy, but um, it's continual submission to Christ and his leadership and his governance over our lives. Well, this Bible story comes right at the heels of the feeding of the 5,000. Now, we call it feeding of the 5,000. That was just the men. If you include women and children, probably 12,000 people. And if you remember it, only five loaves of bread, two fish. They feed these masses, 12 baskets of leftovers. Pretty amazing, isn't it? But after all of that comes to a close, uh, Jesus goes off by himself to pray. And before he heads out, he sends the disciples to go across the lake. So they were to go to their home base, which was Capernaum. And from from where they were, it it really wasn't that long of a trip. It shouldn't have taken them long at all. But along came the storm, which frequently do at that place. You know, Mount Hermon is snow-capped to the north, and um, the Dead Sea is the lowest place on earth, a little bit further south. And so you can have quite the cold fronts and warm fronts that are just button heads in this area. So that's why storms come and go so frequently. But it was a storm that would, made it difficult for them to, to navigate the craft. In fact, it ends up blowing them four miles out of where they're supposed to be. And um, have you ever been in a canoe or a kayak and you're trying to go against the wind? Even if you know how to feather, you know, turning your paddle sideways to reduce the wind resistance still. But it's hard. Sometimes you, you give it all your effort and intentionality. And I can imagine for these disciples, they've had it, right? They're done. They have been working at this storm, just trying their hardest to, to row and to, to make some headway. And the further they're trying to get ahead, the, the further back they go, And just at the point when they're hopeless and about to give up, well, then comes Jesus. Which I think, you know, that's a good illustration for our own lives. That for many of us, we, well, we're steeped in rugged individualism as Americans. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, right? Just give it some more Go and intentionality, and if you just keep working at it, that hard work ethic, you're going to make it happen. Keep going. No. But when they were about ready to totally give up, uh, Jesus met the disciples right where they were. And sometimes I think there's so much we try to do in our own striving, thinking, you know, I can do this. I'm going to make this happen. No, I, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. It isn't saying we have all strength to go do it. It says through Christ we have that strength to do things. So oftentimes we need to just let go and and let God. So whatever it is that you've been wrestling and trying to make happen, make sure you've been laying that at the feet of Jesus to trust him with it before you try to give it your all. Well, 
It's amazing when the disciples see that our Lord is walking on water. Their natural response is, this has to be some other being. This is some sort of ghost that's hovering over the water. But um, our Lord needs to remind them, no, it's me, guys. Uh, You don't need to be afraid. As Rick Wright was here one time, he was teaching about feet and the power of feet, basically wherever your feet went, that was your jurisdiction or a place that you had authority. So when our Lord is washing the feet of his disciples, we often think of that as a lesson in humility, you know, lessening himself, becoming a slave, which is true. But also, whenever he was touching feet, he was basically anointing them. Um, Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news, as we're told in the Old Testament. So he is preparing them to go seize new territory. But another thing about this walking on water we might not realize is that, you know, in ancient Palestinian times, water, bodies of water were seen as symbolic of chaos and darkness and disorder. And so by the mere act of Jesus walking on water, he is actually demonstrating that he has authority to put darkness under his feet right, that he is the one who is claiming authority over power of darkness. And so that's pretty awesome to consider for us a part of the Great Commission for those of us sent as disciples. We too are ones who are to have power over darkness. We are to be piercing the darkness. We are to be claiming authority of Christ as we go into these bold new areas, areas, new frontiers of taking the gospel message. So uh, pretty cool what it is that, that our Lord does. It's, it's miraculous and it's amazing, but, but it's who he is as our precious Savior. But Peter sees that Jesus is doing that and he wants to try. Note in this passage that um, Jesus doesn't say, hey, Peter, why don't you come over here and join me on the water? No, it's Peter's idea. Lord, let, let me come huh? I know I've shared with you before that sometimes I like to take characters or actors and imagine them as people in the Bible, just to let them come to life before I acted like Moses at the burning bush as Jimmy Stewart, if, if any of you remember that. But sometimes, you know, because Peter means rock, there are times I like to think of Peter as Elvis Presley, right? Has that ever crossed your mind? You know, rock, the king of rock and roll would be related to the rock. Uh, So, um, you know, maybe we could imagine Peter acting a little bit like this. Since I denied my Savior, I found a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of Lonely Street I am, stuck on myself. Oh, baby, now I feel so lonely, baby. I feel so lonely. I feel so lonely I could die. I try to walk on water. It'd be easy, you think. But I took my eyes off of Jesus and I'm starting to sink. Oh, baby, now I feel so lonely, baby. I feel so lonely. I feel so lonely. I could die. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. No, Peter gets a bad rap, doesn't he? We often think, oh, he took his eyes off Jesus. He didn't have enough faith. He went down to the drink. Man, it's his own fault. But... Man, the guy did it. He actually got out of the boat. I think for, if Jesus said, okay, Bartholomew, it's your time. You go now. Oh, Jesus, I really don't like to swim at night. Uh, this boat, it's, just, it's so comfortable. It's so nice here. I'll, I'll just stay right here, okay? All right? And, and I think for most of us, we would still be sitting our butts in the boat, right? But if we are walking by faith... To quote John Ortberg again, right? If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. You got to take the next step. And so Peter did that. He actually walked on water, a human being, while keeping his eyes on Jesus, taking the next faithful step. So I wonder for you, what what is that next faithful step? 
The, the movie that we are featuring this week is Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Currently, there are four Indiana Jones movies that are made. The fifth one is currently in the works, but of them, my favorite is, is this one. So The Last Crusade is actually finding the Holy Grail, the cup which Christ used at the Last Supper. So, Indiana Jones, naturally played by Harrison Ford, his father played by Sean Connery. And there reaches a point in the film when, well, it wasn't just trying to find the grail, it was necessary. They had to find the grail. And so, Indiana Jones is using his father's diary, taking these steps to make his way there where the grail is being held. And... Um, he reaches this point where there's this huge chasm. And you, you see the other side where he needs to go and the entrance to the cave, but um, there's no bridge, there's no rope, there's no human way possible to actually get there. But his dad's diary and the instructions, it basically says, take a leap of faith. So uh, Indy ends up, well, just trusting and taking the necessary step. And, and as he takes that leap of faith, suddenly it reveals there is a bridge there. After all, he just, he couldn't see it. And now I'm not saying it walking by faith that it's a blind faith, that we just, you know, throw ourselves in regardless. No, we, we need to use our minds and use our hearts. But um, if we're truly keeping our eyes on Jesus, we're not going to be staying in the boat. We're not going to be at some comfortable place that doesn't lead us. That wherever we are in life, whether you are a senior citizen who is homebound currently, whether you're a parent with young kids trying to just juggle all the balls in the air, wherever we are in life, there is still a next step for us to take a way for us to be demonstrating our faith and living it out and making a difference in the world. So I wonder for you, what is your next faithful step? Is it helping with something that's already going on? Maybe volunteering for vacation Bible school. Maybe it's choosing to lead a small group. Maybe it's to be a Bible study leader. Maybe you're someone who is discerning a call to ministry that God has been giving you this desire to offer yourself in a complete new direction, and so maybe it's missionary service. Maybe it's becoming a counselor or a teacher or a, or a pastor. Maybe God is calling you to start a new ministry among single moms. Maybe God is calling you to start a new ministry among the homeless. Maybe God is calling you to build relationships with marginalized people who would never step in the doors of a church. I don't know exactly what your next faithful step is. That's between you and God. But I know you're not going to be blessed, and I know you're not going to receive the, the fullness of all God has in mind if you just keep sitting in the boat, right? So my challenge for you is you keep your eyes on Jesus and you keep your ears open and you keep your heart open. And if he is calling you to take a leap of faith and to take the next step, do it. Not only is that honoring and glorifying him, but it's opening your life up to this brand new reality of possibility that God wants to use you in, in changing the world. Uh, to think back to the tightrope, well, what it really is is you're climbing on to Jesus' back. And you're realizing, yeah, it's no longer my body or my soul or my desire. Manoah, it's Jesus, it's wherever you're taking me. And if it starts to sway, all right, you, you sway along with him, right? You trust that he has your best interest at heart 
and he's not going to let you fall. He's going to grab you and pull you up and take you to a place that's beautiful. So let him guide your next step wherever it is. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you help us. Lord, walking by faith is never easy, especially when we can't see exactly where you're leading. So, Lord, I pray you'd make that crystal clear. I pray that you would give wisdom and discernment. Help us to know how to take that next step for you so that you might be honored and glorified. For all of this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I speak the name of Jesus over you In your hurting, in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do In desperation I'll seek heaven and pray
we are so grateful for your tithes, gifts, and offerings that you send in, give online, or give when you are able to attend. Um, We are using that to prepare for Vacation Bible School, June 13th through 17th, and we are excited for the kids' lives that we can touch um, and share them, share with them the story of Jesus. And now may the God of creation, his son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Because you were forsaken And I'm accepted You were condemned And I'm alive and well Your spirit is within me Because you died and rose again I'm forgiven Because you were Jesus, you.